in front of me plus half a dozen senior managers or whatever you know you're constantly scanning to just sort of get an idea as to how people are reacting to what you're doing um i think what was really good was and i i um i had uh, not mentioned obviously the bit that alan had mentioned about the matrix uh, the matrix that we had done i think that was actually a pretty crucial piece of work um simply because it, it gave some substance and probably answered quite a lot of the questions that people had anyway uh, particularly about should we postpone should we uh, should we cancel i think i think by the time we got to there that particular meeting i think the thought of continuing was probably uh you know not a reality um but that that postponement yeah, versus yeah. cancellation piece was quite strong and I, and i think the other thing in the background was, was that um people were looking to us to take a bit of a lead at that point as well i think within the within the sort of community the show community or or the, the agricultural community you know i think we felt that people were looking at us um, to make a decision. I don't think for a moment that pressurised us into making it at all. And um, we did it for all the right reasons. No, no. But, you know, there was all, I think in the background, people realised that um, the correct decision was going to actually paint quite a, a, a strong picture as to what might happen for the, for the rest of the show community for the year. But certainly from the board's point of view, I nice. mean, it was by the time we finished that particular meeting and we had gone through various of the scenarios and, and we'd had some excellent questions from the board you know, have you really considered that? Have you really considered this? And, and I would say absolutely to a person, everybody was, was in accord with, with the decision uh, by the time we finished that meeting, which certainly made it a lot easier from my point yeah. of view and, and from Alan and, and the rest of the team's point of view. But um, yeah, reality then uh, really struck home at that point. And actually, I, I, from an emotion, an emotion yeah. point of view, I actually have a vivid memory of sort of Saying right, well, I'm sorry, but you know that is the decision, and, I'm, and I, I just suddenly thought, wow, I took a, took That's a bit right. of a breath, <laughs> I have to say, at that point, and uh, we uh, we in the boardroom, the four of us, just looked at each other and said, well, you know, I had to thank the board, and we came off came off air, and uh, um, we didn't say much for a couple of minutes, really. You know? I bet, I bet, and 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 what about when you got home that night? You know, what what did you do? You know. You, you, in a way, you know, you have got things, things, normal things to do on the farm with your family, but can't have been a normal evening. Um, no, it wasn't. Uh, we also had the, um, you know, we had the issue of, of then delivering a, a message to the uh, agricultural community, so we we had to sort of record that and make sure that that was right and on point. It is with deep regret uh, and a huge amount of disappointment um, that I have to tell you that the board of directors of the society given all the information that's now available to us, have taken the decision not to hold the Royal Highland Show 2020. This is a hugely disappointing announcement to have to make. Disappointing not just for us, uh, for our staff team, for our exhibitors, for our trade stand holders, but also for the public who would normally come and support us in June. Um, a lot of reflection, I think, Anna, would be the right way to describe what uh, mm. that, the, the feelings were that evening. Uh, a bit of pride. Actually, in that the board had, had done a really good job and, 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 you know, come to terms with a really tough situation. And Alan, you must have had a similar sense of pride for, for the staff members, because I think you know, people talk a lot about the board, but you have a, a staff team uh, who are fundamental to all of this as well. So their emotions must have been running high too. Yeah, no, absolutely, Anna. We... Um... We took a moment after the decision in, in the office and, and, you know, gathered some air and some breath. But the next job was straight down to a staff forum. So um, upstairs in the Highland Hall, where the Agri-Scott uh, debates take place, we quite often hold staff meetings up there. Um, and we had the whole staff gathered at a socially distanced uh, way. That's why it wasn't in the boardroom. So they were sort of four metres spaced across the the room and, and they didn't know what was coming. We talked a little bit about the impact of COVID and how we would watch it, but you know, I remember one of them asking me on the way up the stairs saying, this is serious, is it? And I said, it's going to be tough. And that's when the penny dropped with him. And that sort of continued over the next 15, 20 minutes as we talked to them. So, yeah, there was a, a reasonable slump in the sofa that evening. Mm, I, bet, um, I bet there was. You know, that, that feeling of, of sort of nothingness, because actually, you know, the... I quite often talk about the roller coaster of the Royal Highland Show, and once it's off and going, you know, you can scream, but you you have to keep going until the end, and that's the normally the the Monday or Tuesday after the show. 
But this year we were on a different roller coaster and making sure that um, you know we got safely to our destination of, of looking after the whole sort of thing. So yeah, it was tough, but um, you know onwards. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and as you mentioned, Bill, you put together uh, what you know was a very under the circumstances a very good video announcement, uh, which then went out to the public. And so then I suppose you were you were faced with emotions from a. A, a much wider audience you know you've got exhibitors you've got visitors and a whole host of other people involved in the show how have they been been over the you know since the announcement how have they been feeding their thoughts and emotions in into the society i think i think the uh, the first thing about the um you know doing that, that that video release if you like and i think that that probably it gave it a personal touch which i think was really important for getting that message out it wasn't a particularly easy video to make. I think the first thing that came back was support. You know, because it had gone out on social um, as, as well as to the press, um, you know, the social media side of it, and certainly not just from necessarily from exhibitors, but there was obviously a personal element to it as well, which is really quite encouraging. I, I you know, took a lot, I took a lot of support from that. Uh, and a lot of friends and family who'd obviously seen it had said, you know, I um, can't believe it's happened. But I would say to a greater a much greater extent um the majority of the feedback was you know you have made the right decision yes absolutely um, you yeah, weren't left absolutely. really with any choice yeah um because of the time scales etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, and of course uh, you know have we ever been proved to be correct i think we have um as, as things absolutely. have turned out you know so yeah. um you know looking back on it from that point of view uh, you know easy to be wise after the event but comfortable that the decision to be taken at the time were were done for all the right reasons you know Mm. There's 2,000 comments uh, on our different social channels, yeah. and the vast majority, 99% of them, are positive to the decision and, and looking forward to next year. And interestingly enough, as a community, when people come up with negative comments mm. or, or questions, actually quite often it's our members and, and friends and stakeholders and, and trade stand holders and livestock exhibitors that answer those. Um, and that response for the team and, and for the directors has been phenomenally positive. Um, and, and we can only be thankful for that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Alan, you know, we've, I think we've all mentioned so far that you know, this was a grave decision, but, but it, ultimately it was proved to be the right decision. And so then attention switches then to, right, well, you know, we're in this situation. How are we going to deal with it? So many people are talking about looking forward to, to the Highland show next year. And, and of course, we all are. Uh, you'll never fill the void that, that, that the four days will leave. Um, but I know that you're working on a number of different things um, to try and give people some kind of interaction with the show, even though it's not physically taking place. So, Alan, I know that's a big question and we could probably be here for weeks talking about it. But can you give us a kind of overview of some of the things that you are working on? If they're not currently top secret, yeah, no, there's there's one or two things top secret. Um, we are very conscious of of that gap. We're very conscious, even in our decision making, about the, the the sort of value that people attribute to the Highland Show, and that's why people are so excited about it when it comes around and, and as disappointed as they are at the moment. Um, but we're a charity, and we don't just do activity through the Royal Highland Show. We've got our Technical Innovation Awards that are running at the moment, and that's celebrating innovation in the same way as it has for you know hundreds of years within the society. We're, we've you know we've looked at various virtual and online opportunities and we're supporting RET and continue to support that education piece and as well as doing all our other wider charitable activities of supporting young farmers RSABI you know if ever there was a time when RSABI and RET both needed support it was now I suppose we're probably operating on two tracks one is the impact on the society as a charity and as a business and the other is making sure we continue our charitable activity. And in terms of what we're doing, we're really trying to support opportunities out there in a different world, in a different landscape. You know, we're not doing things the same as we have been before um, and the return will be very different. And part of the reason we wanted to speak um, with you guys and, and on farm was about developing that. It was about seeing what the, the mood of the community was out there, see what people are looking for and see what people are interested in. But also, you know, there's been some huge innovation across the food and farming businesses in Scotland. You know, their businesses have made changes in the last six weeks that they probably thought would take years to do, and they've, they've done it. And we wanted to celebrate and look at some of those people behind the 
organisations um, to make sure that we celebrate them because without being too sort of grandiose about this, this is a pivotal moment in society. It's a pivotal moment in the in the history of RAS and we want to make sure that we are supporting our members and our community. Also from, you know, the two of you have been so immersed in this decision making process, but but as well as, as having the roles that you have, you're also and have been for many, many years visitors to the Highland Show. So on a more kind of um, normal level, what Bill, what, what do you think will be the, the, the thing that you'll miss most? I, I suppose I'm in a slightly different position having taken on the chairman's role this year. I'm ultimately missing the ability or the, the opportunity of, for this year anyway, for this show, to to head up the most fantastic event in Scotland, frankly. And beyond that, you know, hugely um, personally disappointed. I'm, I'm actually, you know, there's so many people... The first thing that goes in their calendar when they turn it over on the 31st of December is the Royal Highland Show. You know, we shouldn't underestimate um, what the show does for people. You know, there's a lot of people working in much more isolated positions over the, over the last few years where, you know, numbers on, on farms have dwindled and, and staff numbers have dwindled, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for that to look forward to is a massive thing for a lot of people. And that not being there is a bigger hole than simply not just having a show. You know, it, it, it's a week out of their lives that they would normally be socialising with other people that they perhaps wouldn't see for the rest of the year. So I'm hugely conscious, hugely conscious that we need to try and somehow rather connect during this year anyway and, and make sure that whatever we do this year absolutely leads on to next year and, and, and makes that, uh, you know, a tremendous show for next year. Um, but fr- from my point of view, I mean, Highland Show is, is all about the buzz. It's all about the people. It's about the spectacle, you know, to um, come... come um, uh, foul weather or, or otherwise, and I was chief steward of car parks in 2012, so I um, have that one absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I'll go to my grave, I think, with 2012 engraved somewhere. I'm not quite sure where. You have a a, a good tow rope on your in your possession, then I'm yeah, sure. It, it doesn't even. I, I try not to go back to that, but anyway, um, you know, we, we've been through some tough shows. <laughs> you know, it, it's all about the people at the end of the day. You know, we can put on fantastic event. The livestock speaks for itself. The the equestrian side speaks for itself, the trade stands and all the machinery, etc. You know, the combined element of the whole thing produces this fantastic four-day uh, spectacle and event. Uh, and for that to be missing from the calendar is, is a massive loss, as, yeah. as, is, as is each individual show and uh, for each individual area as well. Yes, the impact, well, absolutely. The yeah. impact on each individual region, notwithstanding the Highland show is the biggest one and, and the one that everybody comes to, yeah. You know, a lot of people put a lot of stall by their own regional shows and, and with them missing as well. Yeah, absolutely. It is, where, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. So, Alan, if, if Bill hasn't covered it all, is there anything sp- particular that comes to mind about what you'll miss on a personal level? Um, there's a huge buzz out of delivering the Royal Hound Show. You only need to see how on fire the team are when we get to Sunday afternoon and, and we start to sort of breathe again after, you know, a huge effort. Um, gutted for the team. They were really shaping an exciting show. We've got some stuff that we hadn't told members and, and um, uh, visitors about, and we were really excited about launching that. You know, and hopefully that's all there for next year. Um, but yeah, there's a real there's a real buzz in the team, real excitement, real pace about what we were doing, really building on on some of the great work done over the last few years. So I'm just gutted for them. Uh, I, I'm worried about people coming out the back of calving and lambing. And their perspective was, you know, we'll get past all this busy spell and we'll go and have a bit of crack and um, camaraderie at the Royal Highland Show um, and that won't be there for them. Uh, and so it's it's about other people's loss. It's the loss of opportunity for young people and young handlers because they might be too old to be a young handler next year. It's a livestock exhibitor or, or an equine exhibitor who's got their career's pinnacle in the yard and they were excited in December about that, about taking it to, to Ingolston in June and they won't have that chance. And and it's all about lost opportunities and, and that's one of the reasons we want to try and think about the positive and, and also look about where you know, where the world is post COVID. You know, what does what does good look like on the on the back of this? Because things will have changed. Yeah. So I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there, Alan, because somebody said to me the other day, oh, I'm I'm really going to miss not seeing this new members building. And I thought, well, that that's fair enough. And we all, we're all we all looking forward to seeing that, but it will still be there next year. And yet, as you've mentioned, some of these people stories, you know, whether it's show jumping or whether it's young handlers, they've been building up to this 
uh, the Highland Show will still be there next year, but their lives will be a little bit different. As you say, they might be too old, their horse might be injured, whatever it might be. And it's those people stories that I think are the saddest that, that, that they won't come to fruition. Um, on that- 